gonna do, we'll probably try to get the easiest ones first. Underneath all this mud. Try to get it fried up with these bars so you don't get bit. There are some ancient wonders about to be set free. They just don't know it yet. So they burrow up in the mud. They're real camouflaged and you have to probe for them and find them and you gotta make sure you grab the right end. I got him. These muddy ponds have been a temporary refuge for some rare alligator snapping turtles. And they are about to be released back into the wild. The thing about wildlife is when you're trying something like this, they don't know that they're going to a better place. All these turtles are on their way back to Texas thanks to some serious detective work. They are escape artists. Yeah, they are. Federal and state law enforcement agencies worked together to bust a Louisiana poaching operation. We uh, discovered a market in Sulphur, Louisiana. There was a lady and her sons that were poaching alligator snapping turtles in Texas and then selling them out of their residence in Louisiana. Call of the wild, we're gonna release this turtle. I mean, we're gonna catch this turtle. <laughs> That's a big turtle. Hey, boy. Hello? Yes, is, is this Brian? Yeah, sure is. You don't work for the game wardens, huh? Say again? You don't work for the wildlife and fisheries. The who? Wildlife and fisheries. No. No? <laughs> I'm just joking. No. I got to check. I got to check. Make sure. Okay. Uh, how many? Uh, how big of a turtle are you looking to buy? If I could get a hold of something like a hundred, hundred and a quarter. So we made a buy in the parking lot, and once we had made that buy, we had probable cause to show that these individuals were carrying on a commercial enterprise out of their residence in Louisiana. Look, there he goes. So I figured that we would find some, but uh, I had no idea that we would find thirty. It took three days of running nets on those ponds, uh, day in and day out. It was a good feeling. Alligator snapping turtles historically have been under tremendous pressure from um, basically people wanting to eat them. They've been harvested uh, in massive quantities historically across the southeastern United States. In the mid-1970s, recognizing that the Texas Parks and Wildlife protected the species, they banned the personal and commercial use of that species for any reason at all. For example, in Louisiana, still today, you can take one per person per day and consume it. In Texas, you've not been able to, you know, collect any for, what, like 40 years. They're very prehistoric. You can just tell by looking at them. They've got a lot of armor on them, like dinosaurs. It's been around a long time, and we don't want to be the reason that they're gone. So we're just working it out. We were able to get some genetic samples from across the range. 50, even. Okay. Through a population genetics analysis. 20.30. So actually putting these guys back in the drainages from where they came from. Oh, that's a good one. Look at the size of it. This is a mature female. You ready? I'm ready. She's labeled as Sabine River Turtle number one. Oh, yeah. This is a strong turtle. This is a strong turtle. All right. Thank you, girl. Eyes are good. Uh, I'd say five. Yeah. We try and go from one to nine, and five is right where we ought to be. So big and strong and amazing. Lovely. The team works through the night. That's six, right, Connor? Yeah, I'm gonna give him a little rinse at first real quick. Behind you, man. It's finally time to take them back home. This one looks good, this one looks really good. Can't wait to see this one get kicked loose. This is all coming together. We're just about to head out. We got the last turtle to load up. Awesome, man. So I'm super excited to get these guys back to where they belong. So we've got three release sites across the state that we're going to. We're gonna go then to a habitat that we've scoped out, we've trapped, we've evaluated. Good. Connor Adams is in charge of evaluating this release site. He's using hoop net traps to see if there are actually any alligator snapping turtles here. There's lots of good habitat, but we try to set these traps in places where we think alligator snapping turtles are gonna be setting up shop. We're looking for places that are like, have deep holes or have a lot of structure under the water. Oh yeah. 
This is a Razorback Must Turtle, Sternotherus carinatus. So if you look, you can see how the shell comes up to a really sharp point. Okay, I'm gonna untie this. Okay. Nothing. So alligator snapping turtles really like these types of environments, these old river channels and oxbows, slow moving water bodies. We're checking this trap. We've got a large turtle, so we're gonna pull it out. Yeah. Oh, and so we have a big alligator snapping turtle in this trap. She looks really, really healthy. She's a large adult female. This is max curve, right? Yeah. All the data that we collected on her, 22.3, is going to contribute to uh, helping us understand how alligator snapping turtles are doing here. Catching these really healthy, large adult individuals is really confirming that we know that we're in good habitat. Feels pretty good. This site is looking like it could be a really, really good release site for these alligator snapping turtles. This one's ready to go. She can smell freedom. I think so. Kind of hate to see her leave, but I'm oh, yeah. happy to see her go. Oh, yeah. My great hope is that through this case, people will become more aware of this particular species and uh, be grateful for the fact that we have them here in Texas. It's truly a, uh, a privilege to have these things in our waters. I feel like this is gonna be a great home for them. They're gonna do well here. So every turtle counts. All right, time to set you free. Very few make it to adulthood. Those adults live a very long time and they reproduce for many years and basically help maintain a healthy population. And there's the bubbles, she's booking it now. So by returning these adults back to this population, we're improving the health of this population here and introducing more adult females. And look who's here. Sabine River turtle number one. Remember her? Well, she's almost home. All right, come on. Kind of a long time in coming, uh, being able to set them loose. I feel great. Wonderful feeling to see them uh, walking out under their own power to see them head into the water and not look back. They're ready to go, they're ready to be home. Uh, they belong in Texas and uh, we've done our part to, to get them back where they belong.